Hey guys, in this video, we're going to cover users and permissions in Linux, and we're going to cover all the basic stuff you need to get by and survive in a Linux environment on the command line. So we're going to show you like basic file permissions like read, write, execute for the user, for the group, and for others, and all, basically how to get root or admin privileges and do the things that you need to do to maintain your system. So this is all just real practical stuff, so let's just jump right into it. So for people who are super new to Linux and Unix, the root user, or root, is basically the default Linux admin user. It's basically the, the, the admin user for the system by default. Now, you can, uh, let, first command I'm gonna show you is, who am I? That will show you who you're logged in as. I named my user, user one. Wasn't being too creative there. Um, you can also say, who? Now, who will show you who is logged in right now? I'm the only person logged into the system right now, but it would list who all who is logged into the current system in case someone else is working on it. Now you can say last. This will show you a list of last logged in users. So this shows you everyone, shows you every time the system rebooted and the users who have logged in, which is basically just me, user one. So yeah, there, there we go. Now, uh, you can also say ID user one. So the ID command will get info about this user. So this shows you my uh, UID, GID, the groups I'm in, and a bunch of other stuff, <coughs> or basically just that stuff. So if you want to change the password for the current user, you can type PASSWD. Now, I don't want to do this. It wants your current password, and then it's going to ask you to change it, but I don't want to do that, but basically just P-A-S-S-W-D will let you change the password and it's going to prompt you for everything you need. If you want to change someone else's password, you can say change the password for user 2. You need to be root to do this, so as my current user, I won't be able to do that and we're not going to do that now. So anyways, moving along. Now if you were root, you would be able to change the passwords for any user you want if you feel like it. So. Next thing I'm going to show you, super important in terms of users and authentication and stuff, is the SU command. Now, you, SU for switch users. So SU dash, now technically you run SU by itself and the username, but usually you want to use their profile, so you specify a dash, and that will you know initialize the profile for the user you're logged in, logging in as. You type this and then type the password for that user. Now I'm logged in as that user. And this is what a, a normal prompt by default in Ubuntu and most distros, you'll see the user you're logged in as an at sign, the host name, the current directory you're in, tilde for your home directory, stuff like that. I got rid of all of that for my user. So anyways, it might look a little bit different for you. So anyways, that's how you can log in as another user. You're gonna have to type their password to do it. Now you can also become root like this. You can say su to root. You'll need root's password. So you can say, I'm not sure if I have a root password. Any case, yeah, I, I may not have said it because this is not normally how I become root on the system. So we're gonna get to that in just a bit. Um, next thing I'm gonna show you is the sudo command. Now sudo, can use to run things with root permission or technically depending on how you configure it um, permission for any user any other user on the system so um, configuring sudo is beyond it, it may not be installed by default on all systems like say arch or or debian you may not even have sudo installed so you can rely on using su to become root to get root permissions but on ubuntu and a lot of other systems you're going to have sudo installed by default at least for one admin user so um, on this system, I do have that installed. So you can say sudo. And for example, you want to do something that requires root permissions. You can say apt install nginx. So you can install a package. I've already got this installed, but th this command requires root permission to install that package. So you use sudo before the command to, to run it with root permissions. And if you if you are in the sudoers file and you have permission to run things as root, you will just have to type your password in and you can run that as root. So another thing you can use that for, sudo, you can run sudo and su. So you're using your sudo permissions 
to run the su command to become root. So you, if you're in the sudoers file and you have permission for this, you only need your own password to become root. And there we go, now I'm root. So who am I root? And exit on out of there. Now typically a dollar sign means you're non-root and a pound sign means you are root. So pound sign for root, dollar sign for normal user. And even when I switched to user two, you saw a, a longer prompt, but there was still a dollar sign at the end. Now, uh, let's see here, adding users. If you wanna add a user, there's two tools to do this. Now, most, now there's a nice script. There's the add user command. Now, this is much more user friendly and it prompts you for everything you would possibly need and, and creates the password for you and everything. If you're on a system that has this, it's recommended to do it. Um, so you can say like user three, this would add a user called user. Okay, so you need root permissions for this. Let's use sudo. Okay, user three already exists. Okay, user four. Now see it adds, it creates a group for that user, uh, creates a home directory, copies files from scale. Now it's gonna ask for a password. And that's fine, it tells me it's a bad password. You can enter in some details for it, no big deal. And there we go, we have now created user four. And that's all there is to it. Now, um, some systems may not have add user. Add user is just a script, convenient script that's more user friendly and it ultimately it calls the user add command. So add, yeah, add user, convenient tool, but user add is actually a built-in system tool that is, uh, yeah, it's an actual binary. It's not a script and it's a built-in system tool. So it's it's more standard. User, okay, let, let's create, what, what did we create, user four? So let's create user five. User add dash M, so we're, we're telling it dash M for home directory creation because this does not create a home directory by default. So run that and we have created this user with a home directory. Now. It, it did not notice it didn't prompt us for a password or anything. So you want to set a password for this user. User five. Oops, and need root for this as well. It's going to complain that it's a bad password. That's fine. I'm going to remove these users later. And there we go. Now we have added a user five. And, and set a password for it. So that's everything in terms of users. Now let's talk about permissions. So if you run a command like this, notice you see the long listing for all the files, file names here, and all the other stuff, the user, the user here and the group, which basically usually has the same name as the, the user, but um, in more elaborate setups, it's gonna be different. Anyways, notice permissions over here. So the first, the first character here is, uh, it, it will be a D for directory, L for, it's a dash if it's a regular file, L for a link, and so on. It tells you what type of file it is. But then notice you have these RWX, this combination of RWX. So this first set right here, read, write, execute. That's read, write, execute permission for the owner of the file or the user. Those are user permissions or the owner permissions. Now. This, this second three right here, read, write, execute for the group. Now in this case, we only have read and execute permission for the group that owns this uh, folder right here, this directory. So um, this right here is read and execute permission. So read, write, execute. If you had write, you'd see a W here instead of a dash. A dash means you don't have it. So read, read and execute permission for everyone or other, so read, execute for other. So basically the first three, user, and then group, and then other. And the, the permissions you can have are read, write, or execute. Now, important thing to know, so obviously read gives you read permission, write gives you write permission, execute gives, you need execute permission if you wanna execute like a script, for example. So notice this has no execute permission. Actually, you should have that. You can, I'll show you later, there's a way to run a script without execute permission. Like this one, for example, no execute permission and it shouldn't have it. 
for anything, but notice that the directories have execute permission. Now for a directory to work properly, it needs both execute and read permission to be able to even read it and list the things inside a directory. But um, yeah, so write permission to actually create files inside a directory. So anyways, that's how permissions work. So that, that's the basics of how permissions work. Now we're going to show you the chmod or chmod command that is used to change the permissions on files. So let's see here, test1.txt. Now you could say chmod all plus read, write, execute test1.txt. So that's going to grant everybody permission, everybody all permissions to this file. So read, write, execute for everybody. <clears throat> So you have who you're assigning the permissions to. You have uh, basically, so you have the chmod command and the file itself and the permissions. So for, for permissions, you say who you're assigning permissions to. You're gonna do a plus and the permissions you're adding. Now, so who you're gonna assign them to, it could be A for all, U for user, G for group, O for other, that which, which is basically everybody. And then you can say, re, the permissions you assign, assign will be read, write or execute. And now this plus sign here, plus would be add those permissions to whatever is there already, minus would be remove those permissions for whoever you specified, and an equals would be to just directly set the permissions to be that. So for example, you could, you could say uh, for other minus minus or I'll write and execute like this. So run this and check the file. Now we have for other we removed write and execute. And now you could also say user equals read write. So that sets the user permissions to only read write. You could say you'd also remove permissions Commonly, you might just say OG, read, write, execute, <clears throat> and maybe grant everything to user. You would grant uh, maybe everything if you, if you feel like it. So there you go. That's how you can change the permissions for this file using, uh, yeah, so that, that basically covers everything about how you would change permissions for a file, almost everything with the chmod command. That's, that's all the important stuff to get you by and change things. One really handy thing to be able to do is if you want to change permissions, not just for one file, but for a directory and the contents of that directory, you can use a dash capital R and that will be recursive. So chmod capital dash capital R, the permissions you want to assign and the directory you want to do it for. That is very handy if you're chmoding whole file systems or whole directories even. Now, another thing to be aware of is that you can also use numerical values for um, to, to specify your permissions, but that's a whole other can of worms and we're not going to cover that, but be aware that that is there today. If you want to go deeper, that's something else to look into. So you could say like chmod um, 700, we might say 744. <coughs> So there you go, 744, seven is everything, four is, is read permission and read permission. So yeah, that's the first, that's the user group and <clears throat> those are the bits for user group and other. So anyways, that's as far as we're gonna cover those for today. Um, I actually have them all listed in the, all the details on that listed in the document that is linked to in the description of this video. If you wanna dig deeper and learn more about, more about that, just check the link in the description of the video. Now. Um, that was the chmod command. Now next you're going to want to learn about the chone command. So if you want to chone a file, you could say, oops. So you can say chone user1 test1.txt. 
Now, if this, this is already owned by this user, but you could chone it like that. And that would change the ownership to that. <clears throat> now, um, let, let, just to show you, you can use sudo chone user2. Now, if, if you want to change it to, yeah, generally, you're, you're going to need root permissions for this, but uh, to change it to anything meaningful other than what it is, but you can change it to user2 like that. And notice this file is now owned by user2, but the group is user1's group. Now, you can show if you if you want to show the group too you could say user two so user the user colon group you say chone user colon group and then the file name and that will change both the user and the group in one shot and there you go it's owned by user two user two <clears throat> now again for for this similar to the chmod command you can use dash capital R to change change or fix the ownership of files across an entire directory recursively. And that basically that, that basically covers everything you would want to know about the uh, and that yeah that, that's everything you would want to know about that chone command. So let's move along here. So hopefully you found this useful, if not just interesting. Um, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you know something I don't know or any comments, questions, criticisms, anything you want to say. I want to hear it, but also definitely hit the subscribe button because we have a lot of other great tech content you just don't want to miss out on. So uh, definitely hit the subscribe button. We do like coding, Linux, servers, hardware, software, electronics, networking, all sorts of great stuff, robots. Don't miss out on that. Definitely hit the subscribe button and also hit the, the little bell icon. Otherwise, YouTube won't give you notifications when new videos get posted. And also check out the list of videos we've already published. We have a ton of great content out there already. So definitely check that out. And that's about it for today. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video.